Thanks, Michelle, and thanks, everyone. Uh, welcome to Caltech. Um, this actually is the first uh, of what we hope will be many um, Lynn Robinson workshops. So the, um, the Lynn Center at Caltech uh, was, or is, endowed um, by a, a very generous gift from Caltech trustee Ronald Lind and his wife, Maxine. And um, the center uh, really serves as a focus point for environmental science and engineering research at Caltech. Um, we also have extensive interactions with our colleagues up at uh, JPL. And um, we see these workshops really as a, an effort to bring groups of people together to work on what are the most important questions in global environmental science going forward. And toward that end, I'd like to thank uh, Nicholas and Andy for uh, putting together this first workshop. It looks like from the, uh, from the agenda that really wonderful sets of talks and great people here to work on what I think is one of the most important problems, the question of the Southern Ocean and its role in biogeochemistry. And so I would like to introduce Andy to come on up and uh, tell us a little bit about what the workshop's gonna be this week and give you a welcome. Okay, thanks very much, Paul. Uh, so first, uh, let me just say welcome to everyone. Uh, of course, to all the meeting participants who have come out, um, but also doing this of sort, the four speakers we're gonna have, Mike, uh, Andy, Rick, and Danny, uh, an opportunity to sort of introduce this topic to the Caltech community, the students that are here, postdocs, faculty. Uh, I see a number of faces from JPL, so I appreciate people coming down. And I know we have guests from USC and UCLA as well. So thanks very much. And before I even get started, I think we really need to thank Michelle, uh, Judd, and all of her staff. She made the organization of this meeting very, very easy for me. So getting everyone here is really thanks to Michelle. So let's just say a very quick thanks to Michelle. Okay, so uh, in general, when I was organizing this meeting, I was really thrilled by the response, the enthusiasm of everybody coming out here. Uh, I think it really speaks to this being a compelling topic. And I think we're gonna hear a lot in the next couple hours about why the Southern Ocean has an important role to play in climate. And so I don't wanna to talk too much of that right now, but I do think just for the next five minutes, it's important to say a little bit about what we're hoping to achieve in this meeting. Um, so in sort of the broadest sense, what we're hoping to do here is identify different open questions that exist that sort of explain the role of why the Southern Ocean is important in climate. Um, but it's certainly true that, that there have been a number of meetings that have done that before, and I could point to a couple of different examples. Um, I do just have one here. So uh, just last year, SCAR, which stands for the Scientific Committee for Antarctic Research, held a retreat in New Zealand. Uh, and at that retreat, they were discussing different key science questions that remained in Antarctic and Southern Ocean science. And so there had been a period where they solicited questions from the community. They received something like, uh, over 800 different questions, and at this retreat that was attended by a small select group of scientists, they whittled these questions down to about 80 key science, science questions, uh, which are actually clustered in seven scientific topics. Um, for what we'll be discussing today, that mostly revolved around Southern Ocean and sea ice in a warming world. And so I'm obviously not gonna list those, and in fact, I've just chosen a few here that I'm not going to read, uh, but these are big questions, really big, broad questions, such as, how will climate change affect physical and biological uptake of CO2 in the Southern Ocean? These are obviously very important things to study and it's really what we're trying to get at. But what I find sometimes is that when we have these big questions, what we need to do as the next step is really identify what are the processes, what are the mechanisms that are really limiting us in answering some of these questions. So the purpose of having this small, really compact meeting is to push forward on these questions and really identify what are the gaps in our knowledge. And specifically, what are the gaps that we're struggling with in actually bringing the physics and the biogeochemistry together? And so I'm hoping over the next few days, what we'll really do is drill down on that, have some really candid discussions about what we do and do not understand. Uh, what sort of follows on from that is when we identify those problems, what are the ways we'll go about and study them? Is it new technology? Is it using existing Southern Ocean programs uh, to sort of answer these questions? As time permits, what are the priorities? And most importantly, how can we do this together? How can the physical oceanography community and the biogeochemistry community work together uh, to answer some of these questions? So those are the, very broadly the goals of the meeting. Uh, we'll discuss this further later this afternoon. Um, but just one or two slides. I think this is an exciting time to be answering these questions. Uh, I just have one or two slides here. Certainly from a physical oceanographic point of view, the last decade has been really important for pointing out the importance of mesoscale variability. 
in Southern Ocean overturning. And so this is a picture from a paper in 2006 by Hallberg and Gandideskin, a picture that I now consider a classic in the field. And what you're looking at here on the left is just a map of surface speed in the Southern Ocean. And you can very clearly see there in the green the Antarctic circumpolar current. And all that uh, this picture is showing is when you move from a one degree resolution model to a sixth of the degree resolution model, the Southern Ocean goes crazy. I mean, you, the, the amount of structure, mesoscale eddies, jets that appear in this figure uh, is just, it's a huge, it's a step change difference. And I think what's interesting, this is 2006, so a decade on, we're really pushing forward uh, towards another step change. And so this is a picture actually taken from a, a study from Andy Hogg's group, where now you're seeing not the entire Southern Ocean, but one small part of it. And this model is also showing surface speed. But what we're looking at now is moving from a 20th degree resolution of something like five kilometers down to an 80th of a degree, okay, or one kilometer resolution. And again, you see an explosion of new types of processes, new structure uh, in this, what is a numerical model, but obviously what's happening in the ocean as well. And what's exciting here is that this is really uh, the resolution we need where the physics and the biogeochemistry start to couple. Okay, and so this is where we are with modeling. Uh, and the exact same thing is true for observations. This is a figure that people will have seen before. This was an enormous effort that was done by the entire re uh, oceanographic research community uh, during the 1990s as part of the WOS experiment to resolve the Southern Ocean. And this table here is not to be read, but very simply just to look at how many different research cruises <coughs> were actually needed to go out and make these measurements in the Southern Ocean. And this sort of feeds into our first talk. I think in the next decade at least, the way we'll measure the Southern Ocean will look very different. There will be new techniques, such as uh, pr studies that are already going on, putting dye out in the Southern Ocean, using airborne platforms, and of course using autonomous vehicles as well. Uh, ocean gliders, surface, wave pla uh, surface platforms, and of course uh, Argo floats and bio Argo floats. Uh, so there's a lot of changes, and Mike's going to tell us uh, a lot more about this. But the last thing I will say is the way we're going to start off the workshop after this is you'll have sit here for a couple hours listening to different talks. We're going to start the workshop with a discussion. And so what I'd like you to be thinking about is certainly what are your goals for the meeting? Uh, Nicola and I obviously have some ideas and we'll discuss those. But also, what is it about Southern Ocean dynamics, the physics, the bio biogeochemistry, uh, that you still find confusing? What is it about the different uh, statements that are made in the various communities that you don't quite understand? And I think that's really what's going to make this meeting productive, is if we just discuss really the things that we don't understand uh, and how we can go after them.